Is my screen visible? <coughs> Sorry. Is this screen visible to all of you? Yes. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, projects uh, temporary and dear to reach a goal, right? It can goal can be a product, service, process, right? So it takes certain effort, it takes certain investment to reach a goal. And goal can be our product, service, or improvement of processes, right? So when I combine few of the project and operations, right, having a common goal, right? If I combine few projects and few operational activities which have a common goal, right? So that will become a program, right? So that's why the difference between project manager and program manager. Project manager handles a single project or sometimes handles multiple projects which have different goals, right? Program manager generally handles a project for a certain particular business unit which have a common goal, right? Think about in this way, let's say ITC or HUL, right? They have a, or let's say right now, Ola. Ola have, right now they have their, this taxi business, they have that delivery business, right now they're into this electric scooters, right? So somebody will be there on the electric scooter project and again on the electric scooter, there might be different platforms, right? But let's say there is right now, it is a single platform. So that might be one program manager who is handling all the projects, ongoing projects who is managing all the ongoing projects. Under him, there might be few project managers who are handling those individual projects, right? So that is the definition or differences between a project and a program. Program is a, so when you talk about program management or program manager, it is looking onto number of projects, right? Which have a similar goal, right? My, Stakeholder value, we are adding certain stakeholder value or stakeholder goal, right? So as you know that uh, businesses or the companies have different units, different uh, divisions. So that is known as strategic business units, right? So under each strategic business units, we'll be running certain programs, right? Then what about portfolio? Portfolio is again a combination of programs, right? Which again have a common goal, which is again at an enterprise level. So that is at a company level, right? So think about let's say Tata projects or Tata Steel or Tata Power, right? So they might have a portfolio value, portfolio goal to reduce this kind of uh, theft of electricity theft across India by 10 percentage or 20 percentage by 2024. Let's say that is their goal, enterprise value, because if they are able to reduce the electricity theft across different villages, different cities. So it is going to add up to their revenue, right? Which is a big number. So that that is their overall portfolio objective. Under that, what are the different programs they might be running? So they might be running certain like infrastructure wise, then certain human resources, then certain process improvement. So those will be different programs. Some programs will be initiated by the HR. Some programs will be initiated by the, let's say your IT team analytics or IT team. Some programs might be initiated by the operations team. So that might be a functional program manager who, who is handling those projects under him. Then under again HR program manager, if he, he or she is handling certain number of projects, which is related to how will you train your employees so that they can go and inspect across uh, different households, whether electricity theft is happening or not, right? So that many different projects running across different states. There might be each state, there might be one project. Because again, when you are training, you have to, states are not same, right? Language wise, attitude wise, behavior wise, right? How to approach different conflicts. So different HR projects might be running, right? So that is where each project will be defined, right? So we have a overall portfolio objective, which is basically for the enterprise, which is basically for the company. Under portfolio, we'll have different programs, which is for the different business units. Then under each business unit, we might be running different projects, right? Whenever those projects have a similar goal, that will be called a program. And that is where the program management officer or a program manager comes into picture, right? 
so if those projects are not related to each other their goals are different right so in that case there is a concept called multiple program project management right multiple m pm right so that is the difference between multiple project management and program management in program management your goal of those all those projects are related to each other they are moving in the same direction but uh, in your different projects do not have the same goals then there will be somebody they are managing that it is kind of multiple project management right is this part clear or any any doubt on this so that's why if you see in the right side of the screen they will have different objectives when portfolio somebody is a portfolio leader portfolio manager he is looking into the overall company value he is not uh, kind of worried about whether some project is delayed cost uh, overrun he is looking to whether i am able to achieve the overall company objective coming to the spu business unit that program manager is handling particular spu or a particular function he or she will be much more interested in business whether they are adding value to particular that business or not under him or her there might be multiple project managers right so this is how it works any any question or any doubt on this okay so then how you select uh, projects right uh, we'll discuss uh, next slide onwards but the generally obviously it starts with the idea generation process each function each business unit will keep lot of project ideas right so if let's say we have to create certain projects for next year the discussion will start this year february or march right what kind of project let's say for particular business unit we want to develop or we want to execute again different functions also will be trying to implement different projects hr might be hr function might be trying to implement certain uh, performance improvement initiatives training programs so those can be also called projects right similarly if manufacturing they will try to implement certain assembly line improvement uh, your it team might uh, try to initiate certain software updation or uh, purchase of certain softwares so each of them can be very small projects or big projects right so now what happens whenever somebody is creating a project remember what we discussed in the beginning the product manager if it is a product development or let's say hr manager hr manager wants to initiate certain training program right it might cost the company 5 lakhs or 10 lakhs per year for the freshers whom they are hiring let's say there is a communication improvement program so they will take external trainers and it will improve or it will cost around 5 lakhs or 6 lakhs per annum so now the question is <coughs> that hr manager has to justify what is the business value right so it cannot be like always try to okay, let us we have money and let us try to spend that it is never like that so that person has to give a justification so in this case it might be very simple right so our uh, like let's say sales persons or marketing individuals are facing difficulty while communicating to outside clients right out in uh, clients outside india right so we need to give them accent training or uh, uh, speaking skills in english right so that is where your value addition will come right there is a requirement value addition right these are the value additions it can be very complicated a complex project let's say there is a product development so you might have to create a business case case that time so you might have to show that okay if i implement this project or this product development project which will cost me or my company around 10 crores in the next 2 years then i have to show what kind of revenue what kind of profit i am going to earn in next 5 years without that nobody is going to approve your project right so depending upon whether it is a very simple project or a complex or a big project how much investment different companies will have different rule sets where you need a business case right sometimes with only 5 lakhs investment also companies might have a rule to include a business case everywhere right in my previous company no matter whether it is a hr project or a, any kind of project you have to put a business case you have to put certain numbers around it how it is going to help right so again different companies differ in different ways so 
but generally you need to create a business case like we discussed in the last class you need to have those numbers ready again you have to have those assumptions because uh, obviously you are anticipating something in the future if i launch this project or launch this uh, product my revenue will increase by five percentage i have that assumption because i am not in that 2025 or 2026 i'm making an assumption for that year but how am i validating those assumptions do i have i done those research have i gone to my dealers and distributors and asked them so you need to generate or you need to give those two points so it should not be my imagination that okay it will increase right so that is where the business case development starts so initially the idea is of where we can like the low hanging fruits right where our uh, money or the uh, return is very high and effort is less effort in terms of money time and your resources required wherever i am putting less investment more return so those are the quick wins project i should focus on them first but there will be some project which are very high like kind of low return low impact but high kind of uh, effort uh, required right generally companies have heard that but sometimes what happens there will be a comment or legal or regulatory requirement so that is a standard question is it always true that we will not work on this project no because depending upon every is a legal requirement let's say right now a lot of uh, companies are facing the uh, like uh, software breach or the uh, somebody can hack into their uh, systems so there is a government requirement to build their website to a secure server or to have a much more encryption so it will cost you to update your websites update your servers and everything but there is a legal requirement you have to do that uh, same thing with your automobiles gradually you have to move to a certain emission norms every t two years or three years those norms keep changing so as automobile company i cannot say that okay that is a difficult project and return for me is less so i'll not do that because unless i do that uh, my company will get closed right governments won't allow me to run my automobiles or sell my automobiles right so sometimes it might be there that okay effort or the kind of investment will be higher my return from those projects will be low but still i have to go with that if there is a government or legal requirement right so how do you like screen or select what kind of risk you can anticipate during selection so you have to like so these are the few things again not a detail list but at least a few uh, criteria or parameters on which you check whether project has a good feasibility or not technical risk what kind of risk so do i have the engineering do i have the technical capacity capability to implement that kind of project so because if something some technology is new recently all the telecom companies are kind of trying to test their 5g technology if you are developing something based on 5g technology let's say you are building a augmented reality or virtual reality which need a 5g connection it cannot work on it because 4g connection might be too slow but unless that technology is tested and that technology has been piloted if i am creating a project looking for future it might not be successful right so that is where your technical risk assessment comes financial risk so this is where you create a business case sensitivity analysis right so what does it mean i am making certain assumption that revenue i will earn this much revenue what will be the worst case scenario if my revenue assumptions are not correct it gets reduced by 50 percentage 75 percentage till then i am making am i making any profit out of it what is the financial risk of these projects safety risk right so whether whatever like uh, sometimes the construction projects uh, dams or uh, wherever in the hilly areas and all those things right bridges so they need to have that safety kind of evaluation right do i need to spend something more to kind of initiate this kind of projects quality risk uh, risk of uh, basically if you have a damaged uh, product right if you like most of the automobile even the mobile phones also facing that challenge right because your product development cycle has reduced right every 6 months you are getting a new version of the same phone so what kind of quality checks do i need to 
implement a quality project which will improve the quality check or the quality assurance part of my product development right legal exposure uh, kind of potential for lawsuits and labor legal obligations just now what i was telling right uh, we need to have that kind of uh, in today's world at least in europe they have made it mandatory right you cannot sell it your websites your servers need to be very secure so that your customer data is protected if there is a failure uh, and your customer data is leaked you'll get into a very huge legal obligation right somebody can put a case against you in india also slowly they are like trying to uh, build those kind of avenues where you have to secure customer data then commercial so these all these things will come under your business case which is basically a financial risk expected return on investment payback period we are, we are going to discuss that potential market share right so this is where your market research or the business research will come into picture right long term market dominance whether by implementing this project how much uh, advantage over my competitors i'll gain initial cash outlay ability to, to generate future business in new market right so all these things should come under your justification uh, internal operating issues so this is where you have to think okay i have a good uh, so i have gone through all this risk the risks are minimal i have to implement this project commercial wise it looks like i have done carried out all the research it looks like we need to do this kind of project business case is solid with all our assumptions with all our sensitivity analysis it looks that we'll make money from this product development or the project right now the challenge is whether i have the capability right whether i have the resources who can execute this kind of project so whether i need to develop and train employees change in workforce or composition right uh, most of the it companies face that issue right and that is where they have a huge uh, bench strength talk about pcs and infosys at any point of time thousands of engineers will be in the bench because depending upon the project your workforce composition will change few years back it was basically java and c in the last five years there is a significant group of engineers software developers need to have qualified in python going forward it might be some other technology right so that is where your workforce composition might change and there might be certain regulatory requirement also right uh, if you are taking a project in usa or europe there is a certain requirement that 30% or 40% of that project team members should be from that country right so you need to have that kind of company strength or that kind of batch uh, bench strength so if you are taking a project you can execute them also right change in physical environment uh, so this is a good uh, like kind of last two years has been a good example of that right suddenly your uh, workforce have been shifted to home right even not then right sometimes you need to have change plant change offices right to execute certain projects change in manufacturing or service operations resulting from the project right so this is where the in case of a production right uh, if you are introducing a new product or improving certain products right the plant manager need to be kind of informed in the beginning itself because it is not about the product development the product at the end when you develop the product it need to get into production and regularly get produced in that plant if let's say we do not have a assembly line we do not have proper workforce we are already like kind of fully running in three shifts so that is where the uh, like uh, any kind of this kind of manufacturing projects product development project manufacturing plant manager is a must to be in your project team in the beginning itself right then additional factors patent protection impact on company's image strategic fit right so if you look into companies like general electric 3m so they have like each year they are producing thousands or 10000s of uh, patents right it it kind of safeguards them for future kind of any any kind of volatility right because once you have that technology and i am telling that i am patenting that patenting that right at least for the next 20 years companies cannot copy that right the impact on company's image right it uh, depends a lot because if i have money 
and there are two ways right i can distribute as dividend to stakeholders or shareholders or i can invest it back to my company right and that is where you start creating image right so they are lot into investment companies like google facebook those all technically top companies most of their profit or revenue get into again goes back to the company in terms of investment then obviously strategic fit where do you see yourself as a company next 3 to 5 years or 10 years down the line right is it a good strategic fit is this projects are good strategic fit for your long term vision right and that is somewhere your higher management comes into picture some projects might be very lucrative right in the short term but it might actually not matching with your long term vision right in that case even if you are making money you will tell that no no will not get into that business right any any questions on this Uh, so there are a few methods again most of the methods are uh, simple and uh, related to each other so quickly we'll go through it so checklist model let's say i have five or 10 projects and i have to select five so i'll create a checklist so on what criteria i'm going to select those project right maybe one might be the investment cost required or the profit i'll make or the number of resources required quality of uh, like team members all those things are list right so that agreement criteria need to be agreed upon here the problem is assumes so let us go through the example first then we'll come back so let's say i have these four projects alpha beta gamma delta right so i have these four criteria based on which we i am going to judge those projects cost how much investment i am going to do profit potential time to market how much time it takes to kind of uh, uh, launch that uh, project or product right then developmental risk so while developing how many risk i can anticipate at this point of time so these criteria have been identified and agreed upon right so that has to be done in the beginning by the program management office or the portfolio management office later on somebody cannot say that are you have not got or you have not evaluated based on some other criteria so that need to be written down documented we are going to evaluate our project based on these four or these three criteria then all the stakeholders starting with whoever is sponsoring the project and all the top management program management office they will try to Uh, access right because at this point of time obviously it is all your assumption project has not started so you'll assess that okay for project alpha what is the cost high cost is high then profit potential is low time to market is medium developmental risks are low similarly for project beta you will put that okay whether it is cost is medium low or high again your cost um, high medium low you should have a parameter right what do you mean by cost for a big companies more than 5 crores might be uh, up to 5 crore might be low but for a small company up to 20 lakhs or 10 lakhs also more than 20 lakhs might be medium or a high cost right so again it cannot be like okay so what do you mean by cost low medium high it will vary from companies to company for a smaller company which is a startup investing 10 lakhs or 20 lakhs in a project itself is a high cost same cannot be true for a companies like let's say tata motors or tata power or let's say uh, yeah, reliance right so that is where this definition will be very company specific same thing with your profit potential for a startup uh, 20 lakhs or 50 lakhs or 1 crore profit is a big number but it might not be true for a bigger companies right so they are looking for 10x or maybe 100x of that 100 crores profit or 50 crores profit right so this is where you agree upon the criteria and it is a simple method right which is high low or uh, medium right these numbers have been decided in the beginning and accordingly assumes all criteria are equally important so what does it mean so for me the amount of cost i am going to invest profit potential time to market developmental risk all these are equally important right so that is the like i am not uh, like if let's say cost is somewhere high and let's say pro, so let's say okay here project gamma cost is high pro, profit potential is also high 
right so i'm going to treat them equally right i cannot say that profit potential is much more beneficial for me then only i'm i'm going to take this project assumes that there are only a few number of criteria so that's what i told later on somebody cannot come and say that you have not selected the some other criteria which is not mentioned here right so in the beginning itself you have to say that okay these are the four five or six criteria on which we are going to decide and agree upon which project to take right so this is a simplest method to work on select any kind of project any any questions on this then weighted scoring model so the only difference on the checklist model and weighted scoring model is i am now giving weightage to those criteria right again that need to be decided in the beginning so in the earlier case what i told for me cost profit potential developmental risk and time to market all these four criteria is equally important that means equal weightage but in the weighted scoring model what i am telling whatever criteria i am going to choose i also have to choose the weightage for them assign score to each criteria for each project multi so if i just go so let's say i have this uh, how many three seven kind of uh, different uh, parameters right criteria whether this project supports key business objectives whether that has a high strong internal sponsor this is actually important uh, parameter right most of the projects fail if you do not have a internal sponsor what does it mean somebody need to be in a higher management top management who is going to say that this project is required and any time there is a problem fund is not there or a resources are not there somebody in the top management level should be there to support you see project manager program managers are mostly into the mid senior level right so i cannot go and uh, talk to cto why your uh, software architect is not available for me or i cannot go and uh, talk to a plant director and say that okay why your plant manager is not uh, making a prototype for me so i cannot go always and tell them directly right i need to have a connection with a internal sponsor maybe somebody in a vice president level or a senior director level who have a benefit in this project when i say benefit obviously for the company not personal benefits so they will help you sometimes whenever projects are having difficulties they will help those project managers or program managers it is a very big issue later on most of the projects fail if you do not have a internal sponsor because other projects will move on and your projects will be lagging behind has strong customer support right so you are looking for any project which have a angle that okay it is going to help your customers right that will have much more weightage realistic level of technology whether we have that kind of technology currently we have that expertise or we can buy out those kind of technology can be implemented in one year or less again these are not uh, necessarily everywhere these kind of uh, parameters will be used. this is for a specific for a company where they have this kind of criteria provided positive npb npb i hope all of you know we'll discuss today also has low risk in meeting scope time and cost goals right so what happens here in the checklist model all these have a single equal importance here again you will discuss and decide what is the weightage which has the maximum weightage and you will decide total has to be 100 percentage right then you will score each project project 1 how much it scores supports key business objective out of 100 let's say it scores 90 how much it scores that has strong internal sponsor 70 only there are people who will support you but not to that extent so project 2 has a very good sponsorship uh, kind of uh, involvement from higher management project 4 is very low only 20% well, kind of 20 score out of 100 there is no one who is who is going to support at a higher management level who is going to support that project so once you score that multiply this weight by that score 25 percentage into 90 15 percentage into 70 and add them up right weighted sum right some product 25 percentage 90 15 percentage 70 15 percentage 50 like that you multiply add them up and you will get a total score so here it scored 56 this scored 78.5 this scored 50 and 
this one scored 41.5. So your project two, which is scoring high 78.5. If let's say I have to only implement one project. So I'll go ahead and implement project number two, right? So this is the only difference between checklist model and your weighted scoring model. In weighted scoring model, you are providing a weightage to the each of those criteria or parameters, right? Can any questions or any doubt on this? Then this is again a simplest approach, uh, similar to your checklist model. So you create a two by two cross grid, right? Here basically it is a three by three cross grid. So you try to put your project in terms of cost, in terms of financial benefits, or it can be any other thing. So you put some parameter in X axis, some other parameter in Y axis, which is important to your company, right? So if I take return on investment, what is my return, financial benefits, and what are my cost? that are the investment. So whichever project will have higher return and less cost. So if let's say these are the like kind of financial benefits and cost. So on which quadrant on, on which sale uh, the project stays, then I will select those projects. If this is the line and these are the nine sales, typically what do you think? Forget about the other like legal, there are no, legal requirement or uh, comment uh, requirement. So each project is basically internal project, right? So where do we think uh, on which sale the project will be there which, should, of which we should take first? Hello? Hello, financial benefits, hi. So, uh, below this line or above this line? Above. Okay. So ideally this is where your equal line will go, right? Your risk and returns are same. Anything above this, right? If I get something here, these are the project where I'm having higher financial benefits and less risk or less cost, right? So again, I can, so this is not mandatory that I have to put cost and financial benefits. I can put something else also, uh, core competencies and organizational fit against cost, right? So there are different uh, parameters, financial and technical also, whether I have that technical capacity or expertise to implement those projects or not, right? Review proposal, then quickly collective judgment, right? So why this is little bit better? Visually, you can just see, okay, I have 10 or 20 projects which are the projects lying here and whichever project are basically, let's say here, highest uh, kind of profit with lowest cost. I'll go and select that, right? Uh, then AHP method, again, little bit complex method, unless you have the clarity on those criteria or parameters, right? Like I said, all these three things, what we have discussed so far, whether your uh, initial, the checklist model, second is weighted scoring method or the grid approach, bus grid approach, right? So there what happens, you have to identify your criteria. In some cases you are telling, okay, these criteria have those individual weightages, right? But sometimes what might happen that you have not clarity on those criteria, which are the criteria also should be selected. And what should be the importance of those criteria? Let's say right now this new kind of a lot of companies are getting into drone technology or let's say drone delivery or this augmented reality. Uh, companies are implementing a lot of analytics pipeline, right? So now what happens when I'm implementing that project, it is very new to my company, right? I have not those kind of projects, projects earlier, right? So on what basis I'm going to select those projects on what criteria I should judge on, that is not clear, right? So this is where your criteria selection also becomes important, right? So this is where this method is much more useful. Construct a hierarchy of criteria and sub-criteria. So you select from literature review or uh, from other companies, get those list of criteria and sub-criteria, right? Now allocate width to criteria. How will you allocate widths? Because in the, uh, in your, uh, what will you say, weighted scoring model. So that is somewhere where you are discussing five or 10 or whichever your top management and the program management office, they will discuss and decide 
okay this is 25 percentage weightage this is 10 percentage weightage but in this case generally you ask those it is a basically a survey kind of method you go and ask uh, let's say it manager or a finance manager okay between these two criteria which criteria is important to you so there is something called pairwise comparison so i have a list of 10 criteria under each criteria there are certain sub criteria so first i'll go and ask them okay under uh, let's say technology compare these two criteria then other two criteria so pairwise comparison details you take so there is a, a matrix or there is a template where you put those uh, numbers one one by two or one by three accordingly you get the weightage out of it so simply if i compare this method and your other three methods uh weighted scoring uh, grid approach or your uh, checklist model right so the benefit of this method is where we do not have the knowledge of the criteria and sub criteria hp method helps us to choose criteria and sub criteria and assign which to them how do you allocate weights or assign weight so we go and carry out a survey internal survey ask each individual those obviously individual who is part of that going to be part of that project or uh, program team right so how do these criteria is in sub criteria if i have to choose between those two criteria which criteria i am going to choose pair wise comparison right then there are certain steps uh, mathematical steps which i have to take which will assign those numerical values to those dimensions then at the end those uh, scores or the weightage will be calculated right so let's say uh, information system project that is a it project or a software project which need to be initiated right so under finance finance is the criteria strategy is another criteria information technology is another criteria right so under finance again there are two criteria short term and long term what are the short term benefits what are the long term benefits under strategy there are three criteria market share whether i'm going to gain certain additional market share or whether i am able to retain my customers or whether i am able to reduce the cost manage the cost of attaining certain new customers or retaining the existing customers right then information technology right whether the current infrastructure is good poor very good excellent on that basis right on what basis i am going to select that so like i said the major difference between these methods and other two methods it gives us a clarity whenever we do not know what kind of criteria and what kind of sub criteria we have to select for the specific projects right and any questions on this up to this uh, four methods we have discussed uh, your uh, checklist model weighted scoring model then grid approach then analytical hierarchical processing hp again i have not gone through the process here i have just shown the uh, advantage of this process right later on we will get into how to calculate actually when actually we do the analysis part here i am just uh, telling you what is the benefit of hp we have not done that calculation so don't worry about the calculation part any questions on this then again profile model uh similar to your uh, grid approach uh, so here you put a risk and return uh, kind of your um, x axis and y axis here you define what is your maximum desired risk so let's say if my financial loss is more than 5 crores or 2 crores so that is my maximum desired risk i'll not go beyond any project which have a financial risk of 5 crores or 3 crores right minimum desired return so i need at least 1 crore in revenue for any project or a million dollar revenue right so in my previous company for the project initially for the north american project we are taking so that was the criteria nothing below 1 million dollar uh, initial revenue right so so that's what initially whichever small project comes up you can segregate out of that because you know that you have a minimum desired return right so now what you have to find out is out of these projects if i have how many 2 3 4 5 6 7 project right which project i should select or which project i should not take 
So first tell me which are the project I will not take. X7 and X6. What about X1? Uh, yeah, yes, sir, X1 as well. Okay. So because it is not meeting the minimum desired return, obviously X6, X7 are not meeting your uh, maximum, uh, beyond your maximum desired risk, right? So here basically minimum desired return means my project need to be giving me more return than that. Should be right side of it. Maximum desired risk means anything below this I should take anything above it i should not take right so i know that okay these three projects are gone i should not take them now i have to select between these four projects x2 x4 x5 x3 right again if i have money i have a budget i can go and implement all those four projects but if i am to implement in terms of okay priority wise okay which project i should take first which project you should take first between x2 x3 x4 and x5 sir uh, x5 i think why do you think x5 mm, sir uh, highest return highest return so here actually we are doing that same thing like in that uh, uh, kind of slope we are uh, creating right how much return you are getting right divided by how much risk is there so wherever that return by risk ratio H highest. So I'll take those project first, right? So in X5, how much return I'm getting and how what is my risk? So this line, if you see, has a little bit longer than the your uh, Y axis or your uh, kind of risk line, right? So ideally, this is the project I should start with, then followed by which project? X4 has equal length almost. I should go with uh, that project, then followed by x3 right between x2 x3 if i say which one you have to choose x3 right because this is the project which have say x3 and x2 both have same almost same kind of return but if you look into x2 x2 has higher risk right because if you say x2 is here x3 is here so risk is lower so i have to take x3 so now if i have to put a priority list so i'll start with x5 then move on to x4 then come up with x3 then go about by x2 right x2 ideally like kind of should be the last one to uh, kind of uh, implement right any any questions on this then comes the financial models i think uh, these models you might have gone through in your uh, first year of project so either it is a payback method net present value internal rate of return option models right so i'll come back to this slide let me show through excel first how to calculate that then we'll come back and discuss that in the uh, slides okay Is the Excel file visible to all of you? Yes, sir. Okay. So I know this is a wrong time to broach up this subject, but let's say you are start of 2020, right? Uh, January 2020, and uh, you are thinking of what to do with your life, right? So shall I go for MBA? Shall I go for a own business? I'll start a startup. Or directly I'll search for jobs based upon my engineering degree or graduation degree, I'll go for a, a job, right? So this is, think of, think uh, those three are your project, right? When you are deciding back in 2020, not right now in 2022 or 2023, right? So what you'll do, you'll say that, okay, so let me look into what is the cost and what is the earning potential, right? Keeping others same, right? Somebody will be say that, no, no, I'll never uh, study more. I am kind of whatever uh, certificate or whatever education I have to do, I have already completed. Let me just either get into a job or uh, let me get into my own business, right? So we are not getting into that discussion. We are thinking, okay, I'll decide based on what is going to give me maximum return, right? 
So how will I decide? So this is on 2020, and this is the first thing for any kind of financial model. You have to first discuss what is your time frame of evaluation, right? Because if I keep dragging this for next 10 years, these numbers will keep changing. So that is somewhere for each company. They will say that okay, any project proposal comes, what will be the time frame? Three years, five years, seven years, or ten, ten years, right? Generally, those are the. Sometimes it can be 15 years uh, for higher project or like kind of space, uh, this kind of big projects. But generally, for uh, all this product development, they'll either look into three, five, seven, ten, right? So that means once your project is complete, from that day onwards, next five years or next three years or next seven years. I look into how much I'm going to earn, and based on that, I'm going to decide. But the challenge, what happens whenever we are talking about finances, right? The money right now in my hand is much more value than the money in future, right? And I hope all of you understand that, right? Whatever amount of money I have right now in my hand, it will decrease in value. Same money will have less value going forward in the future, right? So same thing. If I have hundred rupees, somebody says that okay, uh, you will earn hundred rupees next year or thousand rupees next year and thousand rupees right now. So that is where your future value of money comes into picture, right? Present value of money or future value of money comes into picture, right? So uh, I'll so again like this is all assumptions, right? Uh, do not ask me that why didn't I started earning fifteen lakhs by two thousand twenty seven, right? So let's say on 2020 when you joined, uh, because that was six months, right? You paid whatever fees for six months. So you paid three lakhs money, three lakh amount of rupees. Then in 2021 six lakhs. Then 2022 again three lakhs, right? So these are basically your investment. Same thing. Let's say if you have already also started a business initially to gain profit or to earn revenue, it will take certain time, right? So initially, it will go into your building a product, building a website, uh, putting money into advertisement, hiring resources, right? So for calculation, EJ uh, making the calculations, EJ, right? I've kept the same numbers, right? So let's say if you have started the business also minus three, minus six, minus three. The last option was to start a job, right? Same in 2020, you could have started a. Simple internship job or some project-based job, then gradually moved into a permanent job, right? After your graduation. So again, these are all assumed number. I do not have any base for that. But the tricky part is what happens. Whatever calculation you have to do, you have to do because I am deciding in 2020, <clears throat> not in 2022 right now, right? So back in January of 2020, New Year of 2020, when I am deciding. What should I do with my future going forward? Whether to do an MBA or a graduation or a sorry, uh, whether to do a job or start a business, right? And I have this kind of assumptions. So I'll go and say that what is the average salary people are getting? Uh, maybe around uh, six lakhs. Uh, then 2024, I'll look into incremental rates: eight, ten, twelve, fifteen, like that. I have put. Right. Same thing in my business. So I'll start earning certain money in 2023. So this is one lakh in 2024. It will uh, significantly I'll increase my uh, base market share. I'll gain around five lakhs. Right. So can anybody tell me what are these numbers, whether it is revenue or profit? So if I'm starting a business, I'm putting investment of this money around 12 lakhs in two years, two, two and a half years. And uh, from 2023, I've started earning money. So what uh, what should be ideally these numbers? Uh, should I, in this calculation, should I put my revenue numbers or profit? One, five, 10 lakhs, 15 lakhs, 20 lakhs. So these numbers are my revenue or profit? What should I ideally put? Let's say today you are going to start a business and you want to know that, okay, whether you will make money out of it, that business. And you want, you want to go by the project selection or evaluation method. Anyone? Sir, I think profit. 
why not revenue uh, sir because um, like uh, personally i'm evaluating for me what uh, it is uh, means which process i should take up so uh, i should see that uh, the profit is my money so i should see that i am being profitable or that uh, net present value is worth or not okay any other answer so rajit is telling it is profit anybody wants to answer other way around sir it can be revenue if my, it is my own business why not profit sir if there is profit then we can count profit but uh, first first 10 to 20 years it can be we will count only the revenue part so think about uh, okay and, and anybody else want to give a different answer because sir, other, uh, yeah sir uh, in the initial part also it is written minus 3 minus 6 minus 3 so basically uh, means revenue will be coming in uh, positive i guess after uh, after all the cost uh, it is uh, coming as a total loss this is the means uh, business is facing loss for first three years then uh, it is breaking even and making profits okay uh, anyone else want to give a different answer or any other point of view forget about your own business also right think about the product development uh, ola ola electric scooters they have started their business right 2000 i think uh, they have started in 2021 right 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So let's say you are creating a business case for Ola scooters, right? So in 2020 and 2000, so when they started talking about starting a electric scooter. So in the design, engineering, plant development, they have already spent uh, 100 crores here and in 2020 let's say again 150 crores right so now in 2021 they started selling the electric scooters right this money they might have taken loan they might have uh, invested their own cash whatever it is right but this is solid money which has gone from their pocket right 100 crores 150 crores because they have not started making money so back in 2021, they have started selling few scooters. And it will ramp up from 2020-23-2025. So the numbers will keep increasing, right? Now the question is, what number I should put here? Whatever number of scooters I am selling multiplied by the price of the scooter, that number I should put. Or after leaving all my costs, operational cost, taxes, and, and all those things, whatever I'm cash I'm earning, right? Same philosophy in the other three cases also, right? Whatever money I'm earning. So the problem is when I say earning in this particular project scenario, whether that earning is revenue or profit. Right? So Rajit is telling this should be ideally profit because that is the money which is coming to your business. Uh, Chirag was telling that should be revenue, right? So which one of them is correct? Anybody want, anybody else want to make a answer? Okay, so basically, ideally, the region being this is money out of your pocket, right? Whether you earn revenue or whatever, 100 crores revenue, 50,000 crores revenue. At the end, your investor or the bank, whichever has loaned you money, they need solid cash, right? So I cannot go to a bank and say that, okay, I have, uh, I have started earning revenue. So whenever I make profit, I'll give you money back, right? It won't happen like that, right? So they will need their interest. They will need their principal. 
right? And where that principal and interest will come, unless everything whatever I am earning it is cash to me, right? After that only some cash will remain. That will justify that whether I'll invest in my project or not, right? Think about in this way: if you are giving a loan to somebody, you will not bother about whether how what is his salary or what is his. Let's say you invest in your company's sorry friend's company one lakh rupees. So if you are investor, so you look into whether he is able to pay you back that money, right? So if he talks about the number of customers, number of revenue potential, that is none of your business. In simple business language, I have given you certain money, I want to get back that money, right? So that is the difference between looking into your sales or marketing or looking into your okay, I'll increase my revenue, increase uh, my market share right so that criteria is gone right now we are looking to only the financial aspect if i put my money whether that cash is coming going to come back to me what is that cash after revenue everything gone out i have to pay to my manufacturers i have to pay to my suppliers vendors taxes at the end whatever money is going to come back to me that is the profit right and that is the actual cash if i am able to justify that okay this cash is like in your salary case right so whatever you are earning it is coming to your hand right obviously right now i have not got into tax details and all those things but ideally this is the money you are getting into hand right so there is no cost of goods sold and all those things so this is the money which you are getting in your hand due to your whatever education and all those things right same thing here when i am creating a business whatever profit i am earning not the revenue part when i am looking into a sales or marketing case or what i'll tell whether i have a market share or a profit potential but here actual cash which is coming to my business right based on that i'll decide whether i'll take that project or not right so these are the money actual cash after your all the costs are gone 1 lakh 5 lakh 10 15 20 let's say by 2027 you are getting after all your cost gone you are getting a profit of 20 lakhs uh, but if you have done a job right uh, from the starting onwards you might have done certain internship project based work moved on to actual work then also you would have earned this kind of money right now what happens how should i compare these numbers right so the, this is uh, knowingly i have done these numbers so what i'm trying to show is if somebody is starting let's say you start to earn from 2023 so total earning in the next 5 years is 51 lakhs right if you get this kind of salary in hand similarly somebody who is having own business from 2023 2027 this is the money which will come as profit to him that is also 51 lakhs this person starting who is starting from 2020 without starting a business or without doing anything else uh, for the study he also is getting 51 lakhs right so all of these people in a time frame in the next how much uh, time frame whatever 6 7 years they are earning that profit right getting that money out of the market somebody is doing a mba getting into a job he is also getting 51 lakhs from the market this person is also getting 51 lakhs from the market this person is also getting 51 lakhs right but because these two cases they have initial investment initial cash outflow from their pocket so how to calculate the npb right so npb is something the net present value whatever my future cash flows are there how does it value in the present time so what is my present time 2020 not 2022 because i'm looking into when you decided to do all this right so how do i calculate so simply if i do it manually right let's say interest so i have to assume something so that assumption is that what is the interest rate so if i say that if i putting money in the bank uh, interest rate is around 6% right 6% is fixed deposit let me take that 6% as my interest rate so 6 lakhs which i am expending in the next year has a present value in 2020 Minus five six. These are all present values, right? PB. Six 
Similarly, 2022, whatever minus 3 I have spent it, that is a present value of minus 2.66 lakhs. How do I do that? So for the second, first year, the money minus 6 divided by 1.06, right? So I'm dividing by the interest rate, 1 plus R, that interest rate, to the power 1, 1 1.06. For the next, minus 3 divided by 1.06 to the square, because there are two years passed, to the power T, number of years passed. So once I start earning in 2023, that means in the next year, if I go back and look into 2020, right? So the value of my money is actually becoming whatever I'm earning 2023, that has the same value if I have got 5.03 lakhs, around 5 lakhs in 2020, right? Same thing, so 8 lakhs becomes 6.33 to the power four, similarly 2025 to the power five, 2026, it has become 2006. So just look into this number. In 2027, if you are earning 15 lakhs, that has equal value if you have earned around 9.97 lakhs, that means 10 lakhs in 2020, right? So as and when our kind of uh, income grows up and in the future, right? So the present value of that income in a previous time will be lesser, right? Same thing like, uh, that's why like when you talk about salary increase, we have to look into the inflation rate also, right? The Our parents or our grandparents, those time who are earning 1,000 rupees per month, they might be actually in a better position, whoever is earning 30,000 uh, in today's world per month or 40,000, right? Same thing also I have done for the other two cases, right? So here, obviously, 2 lakhs in that particular year uh, has the value of 2 lakhs. Same thing, same kind of calculation, right? And if I add them up, right? So it is giving me a total value of going out my investment is around this much, whatever my present value of income is this much. So my total net present value. So in 2020, if you are trying to decide, so my net present value, if I do MBA and start getting a salary of six lakhs in 2023 and gradually increase in this way, my net present value, only monetary part, right? We're not looking, looking into the intangible. I'll have an additional post-graduation degree. It will help me later. So those I have kept it as out. This is a, only a financial decision. So I'll get around 26 lakhs. If I've started my own business and look into the next five years, right? So this is very critical. How many years you are looking? Because if I start plotting that for next 10 years, the criteria might change. You might get a better salary in MBA. You might get a better uh, like revenue from your business, profit from your business, right? So that's why that uh, point or time frame need to be decided in the beginning. Because going forward in 2023, I should not say that, okay, let us change the time, right? I, I'm not able to do that. So I have decided that, okay, once my project gets over, that means my education gets over or my business, I'll give two years for startup. Once I start uh, earning revenue for the next five years, right? So what it shows is my net present value, if I do MBA and get this kind of money is 25 lakhs, 26 lakhs around. If I have started my own business with the same amount of money, assuming that I'm getting this kind of profit, I would have got around 24 or 25 lakhs, right? Look into this number because I have started early. Though total monetary value is 51 lakhs, right? Total actual value of money, if I compare everywhere, the amount of money I've got from market is 15 lakhs. In these two cases, obviously I have spent 12 lakhs, right? In these cases, I do not have any expenses. But what helped me a lot that initial these three periods, right? Where I've actually gained money, earned money, where here actually in other two cases, I have actually lost money, right? I have not earned anything. I have just spent money, right? So that is where if you see it is significantly high, right? But again, like this is not the only decision, right? So that is where your financial part is one factor. Then you have to look into other benefits, what you gain. If you have your own business, obviously you'll have your own ownership. You need not have to report to anyone. You'll have your own freedom. Similarly, MBA, maybe 10 years down the line, it will give you because in uh, most of the organizations, once you go beyond certain levels, right? For senior manager position, they will either require post-graduation or a certain either MTech, MS or MBA, right? 
so by that time doing mba or mtech or ms may be very much difficult right but again i'm not considering those point at the time if i have just to take a financial decision right this decision looks better right so same thing i can calculate in the formula in excel also there is a formula called xnpb so i have to put my rate so i have taken considered 6% as my interest rate in bracket values these are my values then these are my year dates right so it is coming same so these are formula is x and pp okay so so this is the net present value right whatever my future earning from the project if i calculate that earning in the present time what will be my earning from those projects right so for the three projects i have calculated that value right then the next part another way to look into this numbers is what is the rate of return here what happened i am giving a rate of return i am assuming 6 percentage rate of return right which is the fixed deposit rate other way to look into is that if i am earning in this rate these are my investment and these are my earnings at what rate of return i am actually earning right so see the difference between npb and irr uh, internal rate of return that is irr npb is net present value net present value talks about if i have money at future period and i assume the interest rate what is the present value of that money right in the internal rate of return what i say that if i am getting money at different time frames what will be my interest rate i am getting from that money if at different time frames i am earning money so and i go back to 2020 and say that whether this is actual decision i have to take see i can put this money in my bank my parents or whoever invested in education or in my business the idea is rather than investing here if they have put that money in fd whether it would have been beneficial right so what is the interest rate if i am earning from that right so this is known as uh x irr or uh, internal rate of return the formula is x irr what are my values these are my values Okay. What are the dates? These are the years or dates. Then there is a uh, for Excel to make the calculation better. You just have to guess the interest rate. It has nothing to do. It just has to make certain assumptions or calculations uh, faster. So let me just take point zero one ten percentage, right? so here it will show actually because there are no negative values here so what will do i'll slightly change this number so i'll assume that on 2020 i did not earn anything i just uh, 5000 rupees of money i lost right so what does it mean this is a percentage if i change it to percentage see the amount of money because here simply is that because i have not invested anything right so that's why it is showing around 8000 percentage gain because see i have not invested anything it is actually infinite that's why the error was coming i have not put any money out of my pocket and i am getting everything right so my return is whatever i money i get divided by my whatever my investment my investment is actually i am showing zero right so that's why it is close to 8000 percentage mm -hmm. close to infinite because i have actually put 0.05 which is actually zero i have not invested anything but if i look into these numbers what is my internal rate of return 41.3 percentage here it is 35 percentage so this is other way to look into your investment so your investment or your money earning capability is increasing it is a better rate if you do mba here here it is little bit less 35 percentage right so internal rate of return so simply if i say that if 2020 i have to decide if i put my money in the bank that what about 12 lakhs i would have got maximum 6 percentage interest right per year but if i am doing mba and start earning money out of it right so that will give me 
41 percentage return same thing here if I, rather than putting that money in the bank 12 lakhs of money where i would have one six percentage interest if i'm creating a business and gaining this profit my internal rate of return for that project is 34.9 percentage anything beyond 10 or 15 percentage is a very good number because if i put a share market also mutual fund also it is 12 to 13 percentage maximum 15 percentage if any project i'm able to earn more than 15 percentage or 13 percentage it is a great project to invest in right whether it is your self development project or anything is this concepts clear on net present value or internal rate of return Any, any doubt on this? Sir, please explain net present value once. So where is the doubt for net present value? On which part of the calculation? Sir, in the last part, sir. Last part, I'm just adding this up, right? So what I'm telling? No, no, sir, net present value X and PB, sir. So this I'm putting the rate, which is my rate I'm assuming. If I put that money in the bank, I would have put 6%. Right? That is my assumption. So 6% is not that every time we'll put 6%. Then what are my values? These are the money I'm getting or these are money out, money in. 3 lakhs, 6 lakhs, 3 lakhs minus. That is out of my own money. And these are the money I'm getting out of market. Then what are the dates? What are the time frame? Right. That was your question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So these were the two concepts. I think there are two more also. Let me just quickly go through. Okay, payback period, right? So same thing, let's say I have a project, right? Uh, cash flow in the first year, what happened? So I have spent. Yes, uh, Sir, that previous question was the difference between that formula simply IRR and XIRR, sir. Yeah, so XIRR is specifically uh, NPB or IRR in Excel, what they do. So it is a period, except they assume in the beginning of year, year or end of the year, specific, you are getting this amount of money, right? So sometimes what happens whenever you are doing this NPB calculation, if I just put the NPB value without any dates, they start taking the previous year. Right, and that's why if you see there will be change in number. So it is always better to use XIRR or XNPV value where you are specifying on which year, on which date you are getting that money, right? So simply if I compare NPV and XNPV, IRR or XIRR, in XNPV or XIRR, I am specifying the date or the time when I'm getting that money. So the calculation is little bit robust. Here in NPV and IRR, automatically it selects a time frame on which you are getting the money and it automatically adjusts accordingly the calculus. So it is better always to use the X NPB and X IRR. Was that your question? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. So here actually you, are, you have to specify the date or the time when you are getting that money. Otherwise, if you do not that use that and just put NPB or IRR, it will automatically assume the time frame, periodical time frame. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. Yeah. So uh, whenever in case you are using any, any project, uh, try to use the XIRR or any XNPB value. So that will be a better calculation or it will give the correct result most of the times. And XIRR, remember, or IRR, remember, the first uh, investment has to be there, right? Like otherwise what happened in the, uh, your uh, just doing job after graduation, right? So they are actually, there was no investment, right? So IRR, how they will calculate. So whatever you are rating, getting money divided by whatever investment. Here investment was nothing, zero. So that's why you got that big, because I changed that to minus 0 0.05. Uh, payback period. So basically, so other two methods, what you showed, NPB, if I'm investing some amount of money and getting certain amount of money, right? Again, same thing you can, uh, uh, same formula you can use whenever somebody comes to you and ask you for this insurance, right? Right now, a lot of, uh, and again, you are going to sell also insurances, right? A lot of people go and sell those insurances saying that, okay, 
if you invest right now 1 lakh 1 lakh for next 15 years after 21 years i'll give you a pension of 1.5 lakhs put that into excel right try to calculate your npb whether actually you are making money or not right with this simple if you just take the fixed deposit rate of 5% as 6% if you are making money if you are making actual more money then you can take that uh, insurance same thing with the payback period also right if so the difference between npb irr and payback period is this in npb i'm looking into how much cash is coming to me money right dollars or your rupees irr at what interest rate i am getting that money if that interest rate is more than market rate i should invest right generally the market rate if i take if i am putting money into government bonds 7% 8% mutual fund stocks 13% around 12 to 13% so anything beyond that should be a ideal investment right so npb again anything positive should give me a good way to decide right again i can compare right there are two or three things to invest where i should get more money similarly more interest the better payback period the less is better how quickly i am getting money in npb more npb positive npb better irr more irr better more interest rate better payback period talks about how quickly you are getting money right whatever i had invested how quickly i am getting that money back right so in this example what has happened 2 lakh dollars uh, year one the investment happened uh, let's say that it is a manufacturing project or uh, some kind of project which has happened and they have this th three years time frame right so they look into the next three years whether they are making money or not so 75000 75000 75000 right so here if you see so here they are looking into how quickly they are getting back whatever money they have invested but they are not looking into present value of money right so in year 1 they are getting 75000 year 2 75000 year 3 75000 in both npb and irr what i had calculated present value of money on year 0 but here simply whatever i have given money whether i am getting back that money or not right here there is no calculation of future value of money so that is the difference between two differences between uh, npb irr and payback period less the payback period is better and we are not looking the my present value of money whatever money i have given am i getting that money back or not so in this case what happens so i know that i have given 2 lakh dollars so obviously if i am getting 75000 75000 right so 2 years how much money i'll get back 1 lakh 50000 right so it will take 2 years to get back 1 lakh 50000 so i need another 50000 rupees another 50000 dollars right if that project or that company is earning 75000 dollar profit in a year how much time it will take to earn 50000 rupees because that is what i want right so 50000 by 75000 will be what two third of a year right so 0.67 years right so two years to get back 75000 plus 75000 150000 like rest is 50000 so i have to calculate how quickly i will get that 50000 i know that in a year that company is getting a revenue of 75000 so to earn a revenue of 50000 50000 by 75000 that is two third of a year that is 0.67 year right so two year plus 0.67 year 2.67 year so i will get my money back in 2.67 year what i had invested right only thing i am not looking into the present value of that money right so that is the second difference is this part clear so here i'm just looking into the cumulative payback right is this clear or any doubt on this sir it's cash back after saving or what sir or after profit this is your profit right okay sir cumulative is a profit sir cumulative is basically let's say sorab i'll tell you i'll give you 2000 rupees uh, today each month you pay yes, me sir. back uh, 500 rupees right what will be my payback period yes, sir so so 500 3 months sir 1500 you are giving then 3 months sir yeah 53 ja 15 yeah so if i'm giving you 1500 rupees 3 months so that is my payback period yes sir 
Similarly, let's say somebody okay. has invested two lakh dollars in a bank or two lakh dollars in a project. So seventy five dollars each year they are getting a profit. So seventy five dollars okay, they get back. So right now one lakh twenty five thousand left. Seventy five thousand, okay. right? Okay, so this formula is uh, given to you. I'll go through it and certain calculations. What I just showed you in the Excel file, right? Mm -hmm. Same, similar calculations. So here, actually, I have shown an example. Like I showed you that uh, uh, in the other Excel file, right? Cash flows might be same, right? But, but NPB always remember NPB or IRR. The more money you earn quicker is always the better, right? So here, if you see the similar kind of uh, kind of your um, project, right? So there is project one, project two, right? Here you invested how much? Uh, five thousand dollars. Cost is five thousand. Here you invested thousand dollars because in the year one itself you have earned revenue from that business. You have cost two thousand dollars. So net outflow is thousand dollars. Look into the numbers. Look into always you are calculating on profit. What is the cash inflow to the company? Not on the revenue side. Revenue my cost is thousand dollars, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand. So total revenue what I'm gaining from this project one is five thousand dollars. Right, total cash inflow, uh, not revenue. Revenue is fourteen thousand dollars. Cost is nine thousand dollars, including my project cost. So I'm getting revenue of five thousand dollars from project one. Project two also I'm getting five thousand dollars. But NPB will be better in which one? NPV is here in project two is three thousand two hundred dollar. Project one is two thousand three hundred dollar. Because in this case, I've started earning revenue much much quicker than this person. Here I in the uh, year zero I have a cash investment of five thousand dollars. Year two I have only thousand dollars. Year three two thousand dollars. So see to get back my revenue five thousand dollar it will take me at least two and half years, right? Year two will go. Year three will go. Then around uh, two third of the year, I'll be able to get back two thousand dollars. So here payback period is also around two point six seven years. But here what happens? So by year three itself, I would have break even in the two years because in the first year I have only thousand outflow. In the next year I am actually break even, right? I have only to earn this thousand dollars back. So in the second year and half. I would be able to get back my money, right? So the idea is, whenever you are investing in a project, even the total cash inflow looks like same. The more the money you are getting in the beginning, that is the better. So that's why if you say in your graduation job, because they are not invested in the initial period, right? Only if they are getting certain money, earning certain salary, right? So that's why their NPB and IRR are much much higher. Internal rate of return. The project must meet a minimum rate of return before it is worthy of consideration, right? So this minimum rate of return need to be decided by your company, right? Like I said, uh, different companies will decide. Somebody will tell a minimum rate of return is fifteen percent as per my company, right? The higher management basically decides that, right? Sometimes so you can go ahead with a ten percent as also, right? If it is a very important project. But that uh, kind of uh, generally is decided by if I invest that money, right? If I'm getting a government bond of eight or nine percent, is mutual fund of ten or twelve percent, is so why should I put my effort in a project if I'm not getting that much amount of money, right? Then uh, last is options model. The options model is basically in NPB and IRR, right? We are making a decision in present time, thinking about future, right? But our assumptions about future might change, right? So options model take care of that, right? So in NPB IRR, what happened? I just put those numbers. Uh, what will be your salary in 2023, 24, 25? Similarly, in businesses also, right? But when you look look about option model, there can be different uh, criteria also, right? You may may do a job for three years, then might switch up to a business own business also. Or somebody who is doing their own business might jump into a salary, own salary also. So like different criteria. So difference between option model and normal traditional NPB or IRR is in option model you have the flexibility to change your future assumptions, right? 
so same thing what we are like doing for the class exercise right or the like excel file which are showing so rather than doing your mba will it be beneficial if i do a job for 3 years then do executive mba right so that kind of question you can ask so you are doing certain little bit of flexibility to your future decisions otherwise it becomes very static right so this is only one project this is the second project third project but different combination combination of those three ideas can come somebody can start their own business then get into a full time job or somebody can start their uh, like start with a graduate uh, job after graduate and after 5 years or 3 years move into executive mba right somebody doing mba will not start a will not get into a job might jump into a, creating their own business might add more value right so this is where the option model works better so if you incorporate future assumptions into your this npv or ir model can the project be postponed right rather than starting a business right now if i start up for 2 years will it be much more beneficial to me uh, same thing in your personal projects also right is there a flexibility of changing the timeline of project will future information help decide rather than rejecting a project right now can i put into a back burner saying that okay once i get this assumptions right then only we will get back into this project so that is a better approach right because if i just decide on npb and irr let's say i do not have the clarity on uh, what will be the like uh, uh, like if i start a business what will be the revenue or what will be the kind of profit i will get can i just start with a, my job for 2 years then decide and by that time i would have better information right so that is where option model have a little bit of flexibility right so most of the companies have moved into this kind of models whenever they do not have much information so they try to postpone little uh, those project saying that for next year or after 2 years they will reconsider those project mostly all these technology projects work in that way right earlier what used to happen based on npb and ir a lot of project used to get rejected right but now the idea is that don't reject or uh, kind of throw away any project if it has a future potential wait for the future information by postponing the project will it be much more beneficial right so this part we have already seen uh, the higher the like these are the project which are high expected npb probability of technical success that means getting that uh, project done complete is high also right so these are basically my bread and butter right sorry expected npb is low here right so the money i'll get from that project are less but i am very confident that that project i'll be able to do these kind of projects are pulse which are very rare to find where you know that i'll definitely get more npb highest npb and the kind of uh, probability of technical success is also high so these are pulse which are very rare to find so finding a project which is very so you are very confident that you will be able to complete that and you are confident on the return from the project also right so there will be certain project which have a low probability of technical success so these are oysters and expected npb given success right so expected npb is high and probability of success is low right so difficult projects some project which need certain technical capabilities right you might not have that right but it has a high return right so these are little more difficult like oysters because you find oysters from oysters you find pearls then there are certain white elephants right low return low probability of technical success low return ideally you should not do this kind of project but sometimes like i said that might be government or regulatory requirement legal requirement to carry out those projects right so those become your white elephants right so like in your bcg matrix for your market share this is something for your uh, project uh, portfolio balance right so anyway i think i think i have already taken 10 minutes more of your time we'll discuss this uh, last slide in the next class so i have given you assignment uh, so go through it if there is any doubt uh, put as a class comment so while answering that put your justifications just don't write the answer right i want to see you i want to see based on what you solve that problem sir the slide you will share to this uh, uh yes yeah, sorry i could not get you
sir today slide sir you will yeah, see yeah. today yes 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 sir right now also yeah so i miss my attendance sir mean ha jul 140 okay anyone else okay chalo take care we'll meet next week and sir record recordings also sir please share recordings let me check i think there are certain uh, kind of uh, last uh, semester that was certain issues in pgp office let me check that okay